These lips have long been silent, but for many decades, they preached the gospel fearlessly. And we know the very last words they spoke before a horrific death. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We're here in one of the great shrines of Ireland, the National Shrine of St. Oliver Plunkett in St. Peter's Church in Drada. Oliver lived in the 17th century and in his youth there was something of a Catholic resurgence in Ireland, quickly stamped out by Cromwell's forces. That was the background to young Oliver's time as a seminarian in the Irish College in Rome. He flourished in Rome, he studied well, he dedicated himself also to visiting the hospitals in Rome and to praying in the catacombs, communing spiritually with past generations of persecuted Christians. Along with all the other seminarians, Oliver took an oath to return on the missions to Ireland when it became possible, no matter the risks involved. He stayed on in Rome though, because his talents were such that he ended up being made professor. But in 1669, Pope Clement IX appointed him Archbishop of Armagh. He returned home secretly via London. In London, to avoid detection, he had to pretend to be an Italian tourist on his way to see all the sights of London. And when he arrived back in Ireland, he had to adopt another persona, that of a certain Captain William Brown. He wore a wig and had a pistol and a sword to fit the part. Eventually though, he was back in his diocese and he was able for a time to work with relative freedom above all in administering the sacraments that hadn't been administered for decades because of persecution. All the northern dioceses were lacking bishops, so he ministered not only here, but throughout the province of Ulster. He confirmed many, many people, including, he says, bearded men of 60, who had never had the opportunity to receive this sacrament. He preached wherever he went, in Irish and in English. He was in full sail, he called on the clergy wherever he went to high standards of life. And unfortunately, some of the clergy weren't willing to go along with him. One of them even took him to court, although Archbishop Oliver won that case. He was passionate about education as well. He founded a school here in Drogheda, staffed by Jesuits, which was to educate not only the local Catholic population, but Protestants too. Eventually though, the authorities in Dublin found out about what was happening in Drada and the school was levelled. The Archbishop later wrote, There is nothing which gives me greater interior pain than to see schools established by me thrown down after such great expense. Oh, what will the Catholic youth do now, so numerous and so talented? But he was not daunted. And in his letters he shows himself to have been full of the faith and good humour that was necessary to keep him going in the face of persecution. That persecution was sharpened in 1673 when all the Catholic bishops of Ireland were commanded to leave the island and a bounty was placed on their heads. But Archbishop Plunkett refused to leave. We shall not abandon our flocks, he wrote, unless compelled to do so. We shall first try out the prisons and other torments. Already we have suffered so much on the mountains, in huts and in caves, and we have acquired the habit of suffering to such an extent that it will be less inconvenient in the future. He had acquired indeed the habit of suffering, of suffering in good spirits, of suffering with Christ, and he would suffer more. He was arrested and jailed in Dublin Castle, then moved to Dundalk, where he was tried but allowed no defence. The trial moved to London, and there he spent a very tough winter in jail. At the trial in London, he asked for the right to defend himself, but once again, permission was not granted. Eventually, his punishment was announced. He was to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. The sentence read, you shall be drawn through the city of London to Tyburn. There you shall be hanged by the neck, but cut down before you are dead. Your bowels shall be taken out and burnt before your face. Your head shall be cut off and your body divided into four quarters. He responded to the sentence very simply, 
Deo gratias. Thanks be to God. In his final days, his great joy was to be able to celebrate Mass secretly in prison. On the gallows, in a speech, he proclaimed his innocence, but also proclaimed his forgiveness of all those who had falsely accused him of crimes. I forgive them, he said, with all my heart. He knelt down on the gallows, said an act of contrition, recited a psalm, and then said simply the words spoken by Christ on the cross. Lord, into your hands I commend my spirit. After he was hanged, his body was mutilated and his head was thrown into a fire before it was rescued. You can still see the burn marks on his head here. When Pope St. John Paul II visited Ireland in 1979, he spoke of the example of St. Oliver Plunkett and how he put into action the words of the Apostle Peter, never pay back one wrong for another. As a martyr for the faith, he said, he sealed by his death the message of reconciliation that he had preached during his life. In his heart, he said, there was no bitterness, for his strength was the love of Jesus the Good Shepherd, who lays down his life for his flock.